bright duty every student matters now that we are thorough with the concepts of probability let us attempt this exercise here okay so the first question here says complete the following statements the first statement here is probability of an event e plus probability of the event not e that means probability of an event happening or probability of the same event not happening is equal to 1 right either that event will happen or that will not happen right so their sum is 1 the probability of an event that cannot happen that means probability of an impossible event it is 0 such an event is called impossible event right we studied this in the uh, introduction part so the probability of an event that is certain to happen is 1 right such an event is known as sure event or certain event right the sum of probabilities of all elementary events of an experiment is 1 right this is what we have covered already in the introduction part so you need to watch the previous lecture first and then come to this then this exercise will be very very easy for you the probability of an event is greater than or equal to and less than or equal to so probability of an event is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1 so 0 and 1 right now we will talk about equally likely outcomes which of these following experiments have equally likely outcomes a driver attempts to start a car the car starts or it doesn't start right in this statement we cannot say that these two events are equally likely that either it will start or it will not start it may start certain number of times it may not start certain number of times we cannot say that these events are equally likely so these are not equally likely right so you that depends on the condition of a car if the car is brand new it may start every time right or if the car is in bad shape then it may not start every time right or any other way so we cannot comment about we can say for, uh, for sure that it is not equally likely right a player attempts to shoot a basketball she or he shoots or misses the shot that again depends on the skill set of the player right there may be a player uh, who can shoot you know more number of times than some other player who can sh who cannot even shoot right so these events are not equally likely okay now there is a true false question and a trial is made to answer that question the answer is right or wrong so if there is a true false question there are only two options here either that question will be true or that question will, will be false let us say you tick on true right either you are right or you are wrong so these events are equally likely right a baby is born it is a boy or a girl so yes if a baby is born it will either be a boy or a girl so yes these events are equally likely right why is tossing a coin the question here says why is tossing a coin considered to be a fair way of deciding which team should get the ball at the beginning of a football game right because when you toss a coin right the outcome doesn't depend on the shape of this coin right because we are talking about a fair coin and outcome it cannot be predicted right by looking at the coin or the shape of the coin 
because it is symmetric right if you toss it it is equally likely that it gives you head on top or tail on top right so it is a fair way of deciding because the outcome is unpredictable it doesn't depend on the shape of the coin right so the outcome is unpredictable any of the team may get head or tail so this is a fair way of deciding which team should get the ball first which of the following cannot be the probability of an event so we know that probability of an event is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1 right so 2 by 3 is less than 1 right and greater than 0 so yes this can be the probability of an event probability can never be negative so this cannot be the probability of an event which of the following cannot be the probability of an event so our option is b answer option is b because there cannot be a negative probability the minimum you can have zero maximum you can have one 15 percent is possible because 15 percent is 15 by 100 which is below one and greater than zero 0 0.7 is again possible because it is greater than zero and less than one now probability of an event is 0 0.05 what is the probability of not e we know that probability of an event happening and probability of an event not happening is equal to 1. Now this is given as 0 0.05. So probability of not E will be 1 minus 0 0.05. Right? And what is that? 0 0.95. Okay? All this is uh, just the revision of what we covered in the introduction part. A bag contains lemon flavored candies only. So there is a bag and it has got candies which are all lemon flavored. Malini takes out one candy without looking into the bag. What is the probability that she takes out first part an orange flavored candy? So Malini takes out candies out of this bag and this bag contains only lemon flavored candies. So it is not possible to take out an orange flavor candy of a bag which contains only lemon flavor candies. So this event is an impossible event. So this event is an impossible event. Why? Because there are zero number of favorable cases, right? So zero by total number of candies is equal to 0. So this is the probability of taking out orange flavored candy which is 0. Right? What is the probability of getting a lemon flavored candy? Now this bag contains only lemon flavored candies. If you take out a candy out of this bag then it will certainly be a lemon flavored candy. So this is a certain event or sure event. So it is probability is 1. So its probability is 1, right? Because it's a sure event, right? It is given that in a group of three students, probability of two students not having the same birthday is 0 0.992. What is the probability that two students will have the same birthday? Now, there are two students which the probability of them not having the same birthday is 0 0.992. So, the probability of having same birthday will be 1 minus 0. 992 right which is 0 0.008 right all these questions we have covered in the previous lecture also like the introduction part 
a bag contains three red balls, five black balls. So red balls we have three, black we have five balls. A ball is drawn at random from the bag. What is the probability that ball drawn is red? So probability of getting a red ball is number of favorable cases, which is three, right? Number of total outcomes, three plus five, eight. So this is the probability of taking out red ball. Now, the ball is not red, which means the ball is black, right? What are the favorable outcomes this time? Five, five black balls, right? So these are favorable outcomes for us. So five by total eight is the probability of getting a ball which is not red. A box contains five red marbles, eight white marbles, four green marbles. So total number of marbles is five plus eight plus four, which is 17, right? Five are red, eight white and four green marbles. Now one marble is taken out of the box at random. What is the probability that marble taken out will be red? So probability of the marble taken out being red is equal to number of favorable cases. What are the number of favorable cases when we are looking for a red marble? 5 divided by total possible outcomes. So this is the probability of getting the red marble out. Second, probability of that marble being white, number of favorable cases this time will become 8, number of total cases is still 17, so this is the probability of the marble being white, right. Third case, when you take out a marble, what is the probability that it is not green, right. We have got 4 green marbles. So how many marbles are not green? 5 plus 8, 13 marbles are there which are not green and these, these are our favorable cases, right? Divided by total number of cases is 17. So this is the probability of a marble not being green when we are taking out one marble out of this box. A piggy bank contains 150 paise coins, so 50 paise coins are 100 in number, right, 51 rupees coin, so rupees 1 coins are 50 in number, 20 rupees 2 coins, so rupees 2 coins are 20 in number and 10 rupees 5 coins, so these are 10. So this is rupees. Okay. So these are all the coins we have of different denominations. Right. If it is equally likely that one of the coins will fall out when the bank is turned upside down. We are talking about a piggy bank here. If you turn it upside down, one coin, let us say, falls out. And it is equally likely for the coin to be a 50 paise or 1 rupee, 2 rupee or 5 rupee coin, right? So these outcomes are equally likely. What is the probability that the coin will be a 50 paise coin? So probability of the coin being a 50 paise coin is equal to number of favorable cases. How many are 50 paise coins? 100. So 100 divided by number of total outcomes what are the number of what is the number of total outcomes 100 plus 50 150 plus 30 180 so total outcomes is 180 so we divide it by 180 so this is equal to 10 by 18 that means 2 fives are 10 2 nines are 18 so 5 by 9 is the probability that it will be a 50 paisa coin second part says it will not be a rupees 5 coin it will not be a rupees 5 coin 
So, apart from rupees 5, we have got all these coins, 50 by say 1 rupee and 2 rupees. All these are our favorable outcomes. So, how many are favorable outcomes? So, we are talking about here probability not a rupee 5 coin. So, what are the favorable cases? 100 plus 50, 150 plus 20, 170. And total number of cases was 180. So, we divide it by 180. So, 17 by 18 is the probability that the coin will not be a rupees 5 coin. Okay. Now, Gopi buys, Gopi buys a fish from a shop for his aquarium. The shopkeeper takes out one fish at random from a tank consisting of five male fish and eight female fish. What is the probability that the fish taken out is a male fish? So, probability of the fish being a male fish when it is taken out of this tank, right? it will be equal to, what are the number of favorable cases? We have got 5 male fish, so 5 is the number of favorable cases. What is the number of total cases or total outcomes? 5 plus 8, 13, right? When you take out a particular fish out of this tank, total outcomes are 13. You can take out any of the 13 fishes, right? And there are 5 cases which are favorable cases because we are calculating the probability of it being a male fish. So, 5 is the favorable number and 13 is the total number. So, 5 by 13 is the probability of it being a male fish. A game of chance consists of spinning an arrow which comes to rest pointing at one of these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and these are equally likely outcomes. What is the probability that it will point at? So, you must have seen such a wheel, right? So, there are these spaces made for numbers. Let us say we write 1 here, 2 here, 3 here, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? And there is this pin which keeps pointing, right? When you spin this wheel, this will stop at a certain point and this pin will point at a particular number, right? What is the probability that it will point at 8, right? So, possible outcomes are that it may point at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, right? These are the possible outcomes. What is the number of possible outcomes? 8. And these outcomes are equally likely. So, what is the probability of pointing at 8? So, what are the favorable cases? Only this case is a favorable case. So, what is the number of favorable cases? 1. What is the number of total cases? 8. Right? When I say cases, I mean outcomes. What is the number of possible outcomes? 1. Only this. What are the total number of outcomes? 8. So, 1 by 8 is the probability that it will point at 8. Second question asks us an odd number. What is the probability that it will point at an odd number? So, favorable outcomes are all the odd numbers in these, right? What are the odd numbers? 1, 3, 5, 7. So, these are our favorable outcomes and total outcomes or you say number of total outcomes is 8, right? Number of favorable outcomes is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So, probability of it pointing at odd number is equal to favorable by total 1 by 2, right? Third part is a number greater than 2. So, what are the favorable outcomes? 
these are 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Out of these total outcomes, these are the outcomes which are favorable for this part, right? Number greater than 2. So, probability of getting or pointing at a number greater than 2, greater than 2. What are the number of favorable outcomes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Number of total outcomes? 8. So, it is 3 by 4. Okay? Look at part number 4. A number less than 9. So, can we ever get a number equal to 9 or more than 9 in this? This pin, can it ever point at a number greater than 8? No, because all we have got numbers from 1 to 8. So, it is an impossible case or it is an impossible event that a number will be more than 9. right? But now this question asks a number less than 9. The fourth subpart asks us the probability that it will point at a number less than 9. So, all the numbers on this wheel are less than 9. So, this is a certain event that it will surely point at a number less than 9 because every number written on this wheel is lesser than 9. So, it is a certain event hence probability. is equal to 1 in this case, right? Okay. Now, a die is thrown once, find the probability of getting a prime number. So, for first part, let us first of all write total possible outcomes in a single throw of dice. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, there are 6 possible outcomes in a single throw of a dice. Right? There are 6 possible outcomes in a single throw of a die. So, what is the probability of getting a prime number? So, favorable cases or favorable outcomes are all the prime numbers out of these. So, what are the favorable outcomes? This is a prime number, 3 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number. So, favorable outcomes are 2, 3 and 5. Right? So, probability of getting a prime number is equal to number of favorable cases which is 3 by number of total cases which is 6. So, it is equal to 1 by 2. Look at the second part, a number lying between 2 and 6. So, we are not talking about 2 and 6, we are just talking about numbers lying between them. So, 3, 4 and 5, favorable outcomes here are 3, 4 and 5. So, what is the number of total favorable outcomes? 3. So, probability of getting number between 2 and 6 is equal to number of favorable cases 1, 2 and 3 by number of total cases which is 6. So, it is 1 by 2. Right? Third part says probability of an odd number. So, in this case favorable outcomes are 1, 3 and 5. Right? So, probability of getting an odd number is equal to number of favorable cases 1, 2 and 3 by number of total cases 6. So, it is again equal to 1 by 2. Right? So, we have got this question on cards. 
One card is drawn from a well shuffled deck of 52 cards. Find the probability of getting first part is a king of red color. I would suggest you to visit the introduction lecture, the previous lecture if you are not clear about the cards, right. We know that total 52 cards are there, out of these 26 are red cards and 26 are black cards. Red has got two suits, one is diamond one is hearts, each having 13 cards, right. And king, we have got one king in diamonds and one king in hearts. So, we have got two red kings, okay. So, king of red color, probability of getting a king of red color is equal to, so there are two such favorable cards, right, divided by total number of cards, so it is equal to 1 by 26, right, a face card, total number of face cards, there are three face cards in each suite, right, in diamonds we have three face cards, in hearts we have three face cards and again in spades and clubs, we have three face cards each. So, total, total face cards is equal to 12, right. So, now we need to find probability of getting a face card, it is equal to favorable events that is 12 by total 52, right. So, 4 3s are 12, 3 by 13, okay. Third part, we need to find the probability of a red face card probability red face card. So, we have got three face cards of diamonds, three face cards of hearts. So, we have got six red face cards in total, right. So, the probability of getting a red face card will be six divided by total 52, right. So, this is equal to 3 by 26, okay. Why? Because total red face cards is equal to 6 and these are our favorable outcomes. So, favorable outcomes by total outcomes. Let us look at sub part 4, the jack of hearts the probability of getting jack of hearts. Tell me, what are the favorable number of outcomes? How many jack, jacks of hearts do you have? There is a suit of hearts, in that you have only one jack, right. So, number of favorable outcomes is 1, number of total outcomes is 52. So, this is the probability of getting jack of hearts. Probability of getting a spade, so how many card do you have of spades, 13, right. So, these are our favorable outcomes, so 13 by 52, 1 by 4 is the probability of getting a spade. The queen of diamonds, the queen 
of diamonds is again 1 right in a in a suit of diamond cards you will have only one queen so only one favorable case divided by total number of outcomes 52 so this is the probability of getting a queen of diamonds right now we are given only five cards the 10 jack queen king and ace of diamonds these are well shuffled with their face downwards one card is then picked up at random <coughs> what is the probability that the card is the queen so we are given only 10 jack queen king and ace of diamonds out of these we have got one queen right so favorable or we say number of favorable outcomes is equal to 1 only this is the favorable outcome number of total outcomes is equal to 5 right 1 2 3 4 and 5 so what is the probability that the card is queen favorable by total so that is 1 by 5 okay now second part says if the queen is drawn and put aside right what is the probability that the second card picked up is an ace so probability of an ace now to solve this question here you need to understand that we picked a card which was queen and we put it aside so now total number of cards available is 4 right out of these how many aces do we have only one ace so favorable card favorable card or ace card is equal to 1 so probability of getting an ace now is 1 by 4 right second part here says probability of getting a queen so probability of a queen now now the situation is this that we in the first sub part here we picked a card which was queen right and we put it aside now we no longer have a queen right in these four cards we do not have a queen so probability of getting a queen now is zero because we do not have a queen card now right okay there are 12 defective pens which are accidentally mixed with 132 good ones so total pens now 132 plus 12 which is 144 out of these 12 are defective that got accidentally mixed and 132 are good okay it is not possible to just look at it and tell whether it is defective or not one pen is taken out at random from this lot determine the probability that the pen taken out is a good one so pen being a good one probability of the pen being a good one is equal to number of favorable cases which are these 132 divided by number of total cases which is 144 right so this is 12 into 11 12 ones are 12 so this is 12 into 11 this is 12 into 12 so 12 gets cancelled 11 by 12 is the probability that the pen taken out is a good one okay a lot of 20 bulbs so we have got 20 bulbs contain four defective ones four are defective So, which are not defective 
these are 16 in number, 16 are not defective. Okay. One bulb is drawn at random from the lot. What is the probability that this bulb is defective? So, probability of bulb being defective is equal to number of favorable outcomes. So, we have got four defective bulbs in that lot. So, these are our favorable cases. So, four is the number of favorable outcomes. And what is the total number of outcomes? We have got 20 bulbs in that lot. So, total is 20. 1 by 5 is the probability that we get a defective bulb. Okay. Now, there were 20 total, 4 defective, 4 uh, rest not defective. So, 20 minus 4, 16 not defective. Okay. Now, suppose the bulb is drawn and it is not defective. So, it is taken out from these 16 and it is not replaced. Okay. So, after this, we are left with 15 non-defective and 4 defective are still there. Right? I am talking about this part here, that we have taken out a bulb which is not defective. So, we must have taken out, out of these 16. So, we are left with 15 non-defective and 4 defective, because it is not replaced. So, now, one bulb is drawn at random from the rest. So, this is the situation now and one bulb is taken out from these. What is the probability that this bulb is not defective? So, probability of bulb being not defective this time is equal to number of favorable cases that is 15 by number of total cases that is 4 plus 15, 19. Right? So, this is the probability. Okay. A box contains 90 disks which are numbered 1 to 90. So, the disks are these 1, 2, 3, 4 and it goes up to 90. If one disk is drawn at random from the box, what is the probability that it bears a two digit number? So, probability of it bearing a two digit number will be equal to number of favorable cases or number of favorable outcomes. What are the favorable outcomes? All the two digit numbers that we have. So, out of these, what are the one digit number or a single digit number? Single digit number are 1, 2, 3 up to 9. So, we have got 9 single digit numbers. So, what are the numbers that have two digits? 90 minus these 9. So, 81 numbers are such which have got two digits. So, probability of getting a two digit number is 81 favorable cases divided by 90 total cases right so this is 9 by 10 okay a probability of getting a perfect square number from 1 to 90 if you look for perfect square numbers you can look for 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, 4 square, 7 square, 8 square. Now, 9 square is 81, right? It is still lesser than 90, right? But if I do it 10 square, it will be 100, which is more than 90. So, we cannot consider 100 as our answer. So, these are the perfect squares between 1 to 90. So, how many favorable cases are there? So, favorable outcomes are 1 
how can you count this? 1, 2, 3, up to 9. So, these are 9 favorable outcomes. So, number of favorable outcomes is equal to 9 and number of total outcomes is 90. So, probability that it bears a perfect square number is equal to 9 upon 90 that is 1 by 10. Okay. A number divisible by 5. So, let us look at the numbers. We have got numbers like this up to 90. So, what are the numbers divisible by 5? These are 5, 10, 15, 20 and so on. 90 is also divisible by 5. So, these are the numbers that we have, right. So, how many are these? How can you count this? So, this number comes after a gap of 5, right. So, a row thinking can tell you that these are 90 by 5, 18 in number. 18 such numbers are there which are divisible by 5. Otherwise, if you have done the arithmetic progressions, you know that this is the nth digit, let us say. So, 90 is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d, right. If I consider this to be nth digit in this AP, this is an AP with common difference 5. So, I need to calculate n here. What is the first term? 5, n minus 1. What is the common difference? It is again 5. So, 90. 90 minus 5 is 85 equal to n minus 1 into 5. So, this will give me n minus 1 equal to 17, hence n equal to 18. So, there are 18 such numbers which are divisible by 5 and these are our favorable outcomes. So, we need to calculate the probability of a number being divisible by 5. So, probability number is divisible by 5 is equal to favorable cases 18 by total 90, 18 fives are 90. So, 1 by 5 is the probability.